Hey everyone, so we've been getting a lot of questions about, you know, different products you use. What, what product do you use for this specific job or, you know, what is your t uh, microscope that you use? What soldering iron do you use? Uh, so in this video, I'm going to cover some different things, uh, the different products we use and the different tools and give you a little of reason, reasoning on why we use them. Uh, to start off with, I'm going to start off with an interesting one, this guy. This is your um, 3M anti-static cleaner. Now, this is an equipment cleaner, you know, used for cleaning. It says laptops, televisions, telephones, tablets. But I use this for cleaning logic boards. Uh, if you get a board in that is really uh, liquid damaged or it's been corroded, it's been sitting in the liquid and it's just uh, corroded a lot of the uh, copper uh, pads and different things, you spray this guy on it and let it sit for five, 10 minutes. And then you can just take a toothbrush and uh, wipe it off, you know, scrub it a little bit. It cleans up the corrosion really well. Now this doesn't solve the problem. This doesn't make your board uh, magically work after spraying it on it if it's been liquid damaged, but it gets the board clean enough in the areas that have been damaged so that you can then work on those areas. Uh, one important thing to remember is if you're gonna be cleaning a board with this stuff, it cleans it so well that you need to remember what areas have been damaged because if you clean it, and then try to go back and fix the areas without knowing where the areas were that were damaged, then you're just gonna extend the period of time it takes to repair it. So always make a mental note or a, a physical note of what areas have been damaged on the board before you clean it with this because this thing gets it really clean. Uh, so that's your first item and, and I just got a picture of it here. It's kind of a generic picture, but this is the 3M anti-static electronic equipment cleaner uh, that I use. Uh, the next item on the list, let's see here, is, oh, this is our smoke absorber. And now it's the, the, the Hako FA400. Now you see here, you can look in the picture, it has two different uh, setups that you can use. The first one is a standing up position, and this kind of does a wide area. Uh, if you have a lot of smoke in the room or on your desk, and you want to get rid of that, smoke absorb it through best to stand it up and just let it let it flow for a little bit and it gets rid of those fumes um, that you have on your around your desk because you don't want to breathe those in however if you have a small area that you're working on say the area you're soldering uh, that leaded solder next to and you don't want it to come up in your face as you're working lay it down in this position and work right there uh, near it in the front you see the little vent area right here and you turn that on and it's going to be sucking that uh, that fumes and smoke right into that as you're working it's not going to come up into your face and uh, save you from breathing in those fumes so that's a really good product to to get you can get these other smoke absorbers that do granted they, they work way better than this one but you're talking about over a thousand bucks for getting those and I mean it, it is a nice thing to have but this thing does a, a pretty well you know pretty good job for just I believe it's around a couple hundred dollars uh, for that so, I mean, and it comes with the replacement filters in it, so you can get those pretty cheap. Um, so it's nice for if this is your hobby or if you just have a small area on your desk that you're working on, uh, pretty good little uh, thing to get and it keeps you healthy. You don't want to breathe in those fumes of that leaded solder especially. All right, the next item on our list that we're going to talk about is the, um, our soldering station, uh, the Hako FX951. I love this thing. Um, it's a really good price. Now, I mean, it's it's more expensive than your other generic ones that you can get. But this thing, I believe it's around $250. I'm not sure exact price, but it's around that. Uh, it's a really good product. And I've had mine for well over three years. It works wonderful, just like the day I bought it. Have no issues with it. And what's nice is uh, the reason I love the way these are built is here's my soldering iron. It plugs into it just like so, there in the front like you see in the picture. But when you go to replace the tip, um, these are so much better than those other ones that have the heat source, the, the, the thing inside the tip, and you slide the metal tip over it. Then you're worrying about the heat being transferred from that heat, um, I don't know what to call it right now, but from that uh, the thing that generates the heat onto your tip. However, with this the tip is your heater. It's all built in one. So you don't have to worry about the, the filament burning out, then you have to take your soldering uh, iron apart, re-solder on the new, um, 
the heat element and then it's just a major pain and those do not last long. I've had this tip here probably for over six months. I use it every day and the thing about these stations is you see right here how this rests on there you go how it rests on the uh, this the holder there once you put your soldering iron in it then puts your uh, the, the heat station into sleep mode which lowers the temperatures and keeps the la keeps the heat or the heat element on this thing lasting a lot longer as if you were to keep it on full time it burns up that tip so this is nice because you just set it in there put it to sleep and it can uh, easily uh, save the life of your of your tips now like I showed you here this thing comes out super easy you just slide this in there and slide it into your station pops on and you're good to go so it, say that you wanted to change your tip on your soldering iron see I have this holder here that has all the different types of tips some that are wide and I'll just show you that so say I wanted to change this, you can even do this while it's hot because it only gets hot here at the end. So you can grab it here, push it up, and then you can grab it here and it's not hot. It's a little warm, but it's not hot. You then place it in there, grab your other tip, pop it in, and you're good to go. You just turn your power back on and, and this tip heats up within like five seconds. So it's super nice. I really enjoy this station. Also, what's nice about it is you can, uh, now the, this one that I bought, I'm not sure if it comes with the station, it might come with it in different variations, but this is the FM 2027. So I like it because it's kind of like holding just a, a Sharpie marker, a pencil. It's, you know, easy to work with. It's not fat and you're trying to hold on to it while you're working on the board. It's super comfortable and easy and you're just easy, to, very able to do those, you know, small spaces without having to hold something that's awkward so this is really nice the next thing is you can plug in I bought this micro pencil now this thing is super small it's, it's literally like holding a pencil and what's nice about this is it you can get different tips for micro soldering now this one I bought let's see if I can find it yeah is the T30-D06 now I don't know if you can see how small it is super small um, you can get some that are, are uh, come to a finer point, which I've purchased in the past, and those are nice. But what you tend to do when you're working with micro soldering devices like this is to transfer the heat from the tip to the board, you have to apply a little pressure on the board. Now if it gets much smaller than this, you're, the tip bends super easy. This one I found out that it you can apply pressure but it doesn't bend the tip as easily and so those other other ones that are super thin uh, they work but they just don't last so this one here ends up has lasted me a while so I like using it and I don't use it all the time but what's nice about it is when I get done with that tip and I need to switch over to the micro soldering pencil I just unplug it from the station plug in my micro soldering pencil turn it back on heats up in a matter of seconds so it's super easy to switch with this station. I really like the FX951. And you can get uh, some that uh, hold the micro, t the soldering tweezers. Uh, this one does not work with the micro soldering tweezers. You can get some that have two different uh, plugins and t two different temperatures so that you can have two plugged in at the same time. I don't really need that. Um, I just easily switch it out. So this is the one I use. All right, let's go to the next picture here. Um, soldering or, or solder I, I like to use the the Kester I think it's the 331 uh, I have it right here um, this is your leaded solder works really well it has the uh, flux inside of it uh, so it you can buy you can you can cheap out on solder done it before not worth it um, the solder does not flow well it just balls up and it's just it's really not good quality this stuff here this Kester uh, solder really good stuff and uh, I think you'd like it too that's the reason I've stuck with this for so many years all right what do we have next oh yeah our quick hot air station now many of you have asked you know how, how do you get that pro uh, that thing to heat up so super fast and you're able to remove that chip so fast this 
quick station is amazing. Now I've, I've gone with other hot air stations before and they'll last six months, uh, maybe a year, you're really pushing it. This thing's lasted a good long time, it's well over a year now, I think I'm going on two years. And the thing that you have to worry about with your hot air stations is your power of air being pushed out. Now there's a pump inside of these stations. The other ones that we've bought, within six months they start to lose their power and they don't push air as hard. Uh, and really if you're not having any airflow, if you're losing your airflow, then you're use, losing your temperatures. And so once that starts happening, you just can't use that hot air station anymore. Uh, this station here, the 861DW, really good. It's keeping its power. It's it's still removes uh, components like the day I bought it. Um, and I've been very satisfied with it. And another nice thing about it, it's not very expensive compared to your other stations that are na you know name brand. These, the quick station has been really well and it's got the three channels on it there. You see there that has three different channels. So you can save your temperatures and your airspeed hold down that the channel one channel two channel three hold down whichever one you want to save it to it beeps and it saves it to your um your preferences there so that if you're like hey i really like this temperature for working on iphones i need to save this you can save it and if you get to another one you're like this chip moves removes the best with this temperature save it uh, so that's coming really handy and i do like it uh, i do wish that there was a dial instead of the mashing the buttons you know to get the temperature and the airflow up and down but that's just being nitpicky it's a really good uh, hot air station and I do recommend it the next one let's see we've already talked about that okay we're getting into let's talk about the microscope first um, this microscope is the SM 4 NTP it's the M scope um, and I've used other M scopes before this one I really like because as you can see it has the boom stand so you can pull the microscope to you oh, and it'll push it away from you and it swivels side to side and this way so it's, it's really nice and getting it if you have a desk that you're working on and you're working on maybe some small boards some larger boards and you instead of moving the board around constantly you can set the board on your desk and you can kind of move with it and it's a lot easier to work with and another thing is it's super clear um, crystal clear and I, and I know that um, you guys have probably seen the videos with, through the, the microscope camera that's pretty clear too uh, don't get me wrong that's clear but looking through with your eyes is so much clearer I mean it's 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 pretty amazing it's a really nice product it, I mean it's pricey as far as um, microscopes go but I mean it's worth it if this is what you're gonna be doing every day you need something to look through that's gonna not kill your eyes you're not having to squint or you're not trying to you know work hard to make out what you're looking at it's a really good microscope and uh, plus I, I like the fact that it has the zoom so you have a you have the adjustment to make the image clear but then you have your zoom and instead of you know flipping the the microscope uh, around to different zoom types this one you just twist the knob and it feels like you're just zooming in um, and so that's really cool. It's really, really nice when you're trying to micro, uh, micro solder some things, get in clear or closer, and then instead of having to flip it around, you can just slide the knob and it goes up and down. So really good product. And now for um, doing recording, uh, this is the microscope camera I use. It's the Amscope uh, HD200VP-UM. Um, and you have several different options that you can output on. You can output on HDMI which goes straight to a, a TV or a monitor so that you can be looking at that instead of looking down if you prefer to work that way or um, if you have HDMI input into your computer you can then you know broadcast it into your computer and record uh, you can output through USB which then you can hook that to your computer and your computer recognizes it as a camera uh, so a lot of computers do that and then you can record uh, your um, microscope footage that way or it has a SD slot so that you can record something say a customer for some reason wants to you know have the footage of you working on it you can do that and record it or if you're wanting to save it for yourself um, you can record it that way on a SD slot so a couple different uh, cool things about that camera it is pricey but hey I mean it's it's got really good quality and uh, just enjoyed working with all Endoscope stuff so far um, 
few other things. Uh, I use a Fluke mi a multimeter. This is the Fluke 17B. Now you don't have to get to 17B. It has a few different features such as like measuring uh, temperatures, uh, different things like that. Um, and not necessarily do you have to get get the temperature uh, meter, but um, I've used it a few times and it's it's you know it, you don't have to use it honestly. But I got a really good deal on this one. It was just as cheap as the 16, uh, so it ended up might as well just get the one that's upgraded. Um, but I really like Fluke multimeters. That's uh, trustworthy. Uh, they're durable. Uh, they're just a really good product. So uh, that's that and. Um, you can buy different tips for them. Now, I've, you can see that I've used th these until they're, you know, they're on their last leg probably, but hey, all you had to do was wrap some tape around it to keep them going. But these are really fine tips, uh, like needle nose tips. The ones it comes with, they're a little bit fatter and it's hard to measure, you know, logic board, small devices without shorting them out. So we bought these tips and uh, that's a must if you're going to be using a multimeter on logic boards because uh, it's just really small areas that you have to get these into so it's worth buying these extra tips or the replacement tips for um, I believe that is everything looking around I mean uh, I mean it's not everything that I use but it's the main things I mean you can get the, the alcohol uh, pump it's like a fingernail polish remover pump you've probably seen those before um, maybe not I hadn't <laughs> Um, but that's nice to have like if you are working on a board and you just need a little bit of alcohol to clean the area as you continue working Maybe you have flux all over the board and you need to continue working without having to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner um, You use that and just get a little cotton swab or a paper towel and just put a little alcohol in there really quick and continue working uh, So that's been really handy to have as well um, Let's see. What did I not talk about? Did I cover everything? I think I did. So anyways, that's uh, a lot of the different things that I use. Um, if I have missed anything, or if you have any other questions, uh, please let me know. And uh, we can maybe do another video on that, or I'll include it, include it in another video that I do next. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please uh, like it and give us a subscribe so that you can be notified when we come out with more videos. Uh, we try to keep uh, everyone informed and uh, up to date and try to teach something you know, on all of our videos to make them educational, but also we like to have fun because it is, I mean, this is a fun job. Uh, it's something new every day. It's, uh, you learn something new. I'm constantly learning. Um, feels like every day I feel like I'm dumb because I learn something new and it's just like, you know, it never ends, especially with the newer products that are coming out. Also, please check out our Facebook page. Uh, we like to post on there every day, uh, different products, you know, different things to get the community involved and enjoy discussing. Uh, so check out our Facebook page as well. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So until next time, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you later.